Slap House, Slap House Pod is where things happen. That was it. Do do do. And we're back. There we go. Back. How oh, y'all doing? That was the intro. Yeah, that's, that's the intro. All right, that's the intro. <laughs> that got worse. Episode we're working two, on it. Episode two, we're back. Um, and a lot of people seem to like the podcast, guys. So yeah, that's why we're back. They Quick didn't, turnaround? I didn't. I didn't like the. Pre- <laughs> you didn't like it? <laughs> no, it's fine. I could have been better. I didn't like the moderator that much. <laughs> what's your so. rating? Yeah, what's your um, who scored rating? Like if you're if I were to rate if I were to rate myself yeah rate yourself as a podcaster yeah <laughs> I don't know who scored four out of ten four four out of ten okay yeah, how about you John uh I'd say I'd say give it a six point five six point five I think, it, I think it's a good Whoa. pod it was a good time okay okay I'd say six six a lot, six. a lot of people DM'd me about the the pod they actually liked it like who your mom <laughs> hey. Hey. Right. yeah three out of ten for sure yeah. <laughs> all right, all it's right. worse um but hey we're back. Uh, with another episode of the Slap House podcast. Um, and we have a special guest soon. We'll, yes, we we'll talk about it later. Uh, I thought he actually pulled the, the sticker, but he's the guy that hey. owns owns the sticker. Wait, he owns, owns sh- the owns store. The store. <laughs> he owns the store. We practice this. Yes. God, I, I owns a store, but he has a funny story. He does have a story. Yeah, so what's, we shall see. So we'll, we'll, I want we'll to get him. more context. We'll talk to him. Yeah, yeah. He's in the waiting room right now, so we'll, he doesn't yeah. even know we're like recording straight oh, up. Really? Yeah, oh, really? He has no damn. idea. I don't know how we're supposed to do it, but uh, we'll figure it out. Um, but should we go? We probably should get right into it. Right? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's waiting. waiting. Right? It's yeah. always 6.15. Okay. You put him in the wait. How long has he been in the waiting room? I don't know. I just saw the thing pop up. Oh, oh my God. God. This, is, this is poor Zoom etiquette for sure. Ryan, welcome to the episode number two, okay? This is, you're the first ever guest on Slab House. All right, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> right away, we couldn't come a reaction. We couldn't continue our own content, so we need other people to Yeah, exactly, yeah, right away. But, um, but how you doing? I'm doing great. I just came up to my shop to do this instead of uh, yelling at my daughter's door, so. <laughs> oh, very cool, very cool. So you have a sh- uh, store in Virginia, I, I uh, assume? Or, or... Yep. Yeah, yeah, we've actually, it, my parents started it in 1991. Oh, wow. You said parents? And, uh, go ahead. You said parents? Yeah, it, my parents started the store, uh, so I'm like second generation. Oh, awesome. Wow. Oh, wow. Good. Hey, I think that's an arsenal. Is that an arsenal? Uh, but... Yeah. Oh! Hey! Whoa, 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 let's go! So the guy behind in the background. Uh, his name is Will. He's a big Arsenal fan right now, so <laughs> he's all he's all about that life. But um, hey, but tell us your story. I know um, we had a heated debate, me and John specifically, uh, on, on the on the one of one messy sticker that was pulled in your store. But my understanding is not actually your sticker, right? No, definitely not mine. Um, okay, I I got to witness it or hold it. And actually, I put it in a I put it in a penny sleeve and a top loader for the guy because he just literally walked in, holding it loose in his hand. <laughs> it didn't look any, like, major damage, but it kind of freaked me out. So I'll, I'll back up if you guys want me to go right to the store. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah. Let's get into it. So I, the store I've had forever, but we've we've sold just like match attacks, panini stickers, that sort of thing for all the time, uh, year round. Uh, five, six months ago, I decided why not make a little better use of it, have a little bit better um, exposure and, and, and do a little, nothing crazy, but have just a little better selection of soccer cards here. Right. Sort of like mini, like a mini cards shop, but actually have a physical store or location where you can come and get only soccer cards. So it's like going to the Walmart or Target section, but only the soccer cards and also have singles and some slabs and things like that. That's right. really high. That's awesome. Yep. So in doing so, the guys who work here got into doing it. You know, they're all soccer fans. Obviously, if I'm going to hire you, you got to know a lot about soccer. Um, more so on the cleat side and jerseys and teams and things like that. But it, it it's a natural thing to know about that and then understand cards as well. So one of my uh, staff members, Brian, sold a guy a box, two boxes actually, uh, who didn't know about the parallels. He came in our store wow. uh, two weeks before we came in, and Brian just said, "Hey, just he, I've heard him sell stuff to people, and he's he tells everybody about it. He tells, hey, this is the first time they've done the parallels. They've never been done before. It's a cool album. You can collect it, but just by the way, look out for these cards. And I think if he's like me, you tell everybody, you know, you'll never get a black one. It'll never happen. But <laughs> if you do, make sure you put it away and be safe with it. Well, sure enough, like." A week after we sold this guy two boxes, 
So I don't know. We spent like maybe a little over a hundred bucks. Well, good prices. Just steady <laughs> I'm actually in the back too. I'm actually doing a whatnot show. Oh, nice. Oh, awesome. Okay, very cool. We'll have to tune into that. I think I had, I think I had four people on my show at the time. <laughs> um, because it was like probably the fourth or fifth whatnot show I've ever done. Um, so I go to the front. He's like, he's like, you gotta come up front. And I didn't know what he said to me. I was like, what? Why, why do I have to come up front? Like, usually it's a customer has a problem or. I, for some reason, I thought he said my brother was here, actually, because sometimes my brother comes by with his kids. So I go up front. I don't see my brother. I don't see any. I see just a guy standing at the front where we sell our cars. <laughs> and he's like, you got to see this. I'm like, oh, wow. He's got something cool. Like he's got like a, an auto car or something interesting. And he's just holding the messy there. Like <laughs> bare hands. <laughs> wow. And I look at him and, I, and he's just got a big smile on his face. Like, yeah. And I'm like you know what that is. And Brian just kind of mesmerized to the guy that sold him the boxes. And I was like, stop right there, man. Let me, let me go get something. And I, I literally like fumbled through where I have my <laughs> carton supplies. And I'm like, I, for some reason I couldn't even find like a, a penny sleeve that was like new. And I got it in the penny sleeve and I'm like, dude, can I take a picture of it? Do you mind? He's like, no, no, I don't care. And I, I don't actually know how old the guy was, but he was fairly young and he was actually came in with his dad. Wow, that's, awesome. that's sweet. He's like, he's like, he's like, do you think this is worth a lot of money? I'm like, yeah, it, it potentially could be. And I kind of joked with him. I was like, I was like, maybe I could trade my whole store for it or something. <laughs> <laughs> and, and oddly enough, we had just got in, like we sell customized jerseys, but for some reason this year, Adidas decided to have some of the Messi jerseys come already printed with uh with with messy on him yeah so i yeah. literally had him hanging right there i was like dude you got to take a picture right in front of the messy jersey so we did a couple of pictures like that and i just said i said you guys should just go to the bank and put in a safe deposit figure it out later you're gonna get offers we of course we got phone calls here at the store we got many many messages on uh, uh social media yeah but yeah. that was it i mean i think brian i think brian stayed in touch with them via instagram but i was like yeah come back and say hey but it's your card i just I just sold it. I'm like the winning lotto ticket seller or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> wow. exactly. Well, yeah. I, I have a quick question. Um, I don't know if you're allowed to divulge the, the information there or anything like that, but uh, what what were ballpark estimates of offers that you know of? Like, do, are you allowed to talk about it? Like, I'm just curious. No, no. I mean, I just I, I just noticed right away there was a stream of people like, hey, I know the, the person who called here, which was a call that I did not field. They just they just quoted like, I'm a very serious buyer. I have a big collection. I'm willing to sell off. Like, basically, it sounded like they're willing to sell off a majority of their high end cards that they own. To yeah. Get wow. Oh, geez. I, I did not feel I did not feel that phone call, but. I'm like, if I own this, I gave the guy advice. I'm like, you're stupid. You don't want to take any offer. You want to put it away, let people know about it, and then build the hype. There, um, there's many ways to go about selling something like this if you don't want it. And it's not like he's like a super high end collector who's. So unfortunately, I think something like this, it's it's not in an album, right? <laughs> thank <Yeah>. God. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank yeah. God. Thank God. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, my whole thing with that song was like. It's still the only one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what we were joking about. Yeah, you cut it out. It's still the one of one. Yeah, still the one. <laughs> of one. It's a one of one album now. My understanding: if you had that song and you figured it out, you could cut it, send it to get authenticated, right? Not, uh, not graded. Just, just say that it's authentic, and then there you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how, how about you, Ryan? Like we we were having a debate um, last week about the the valuation of a sticker and everything like that. Uh, whose side are you on? So there's two sides. There's <laughs> Team John and Team Brian. Um, he Team John says it's not worth close to even three k. Uh, okay, well, okay. That, that has that has that has changed. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan, oh Ryan, my God. <laughs> okay. In hindsight, Raina sold the next day for four k. Ryan. So the the number obviously changes. <laughs> But I'm just busting 100, 100k. I don't know about that. the 100k was the original question. It was, it was a, I'm just busting his balls. Yeah, I know. He's putting me on blast, but yeah. It's an interesting. You know, you guys are looking for interesting stuff. It's an interesting thing to talk about. Um, but I mean, it's it's a one of one, and it's messy. It's the best one. It's it's like I kind of talked to the guy's dad. I was like, man, you know, come to think of it, if he like 
even does well at this World Cup, let alone win it, which, yeah. you know, Argentina's not one of the big favorites, but that could go crazy in its value. So, like, if you don't need the money now, if you don't need to sell it, just wait till after the World Cup. Even if something, like, bad happens to Messi, he's still Messi. Right. His legacy's sure. there. Yeah. I mean, I think whatever you could sell it for right now would be more after the World Cup, regardless of what happens. That's oh, yeah. interesting. Fair That's point. interesting. Yeah, that's why that's why we like to have other people's opinions because like literally everybody has their own thoughts on what to do with it and it's super interesting that you have your thoughts on that too yeah, yeah. i actually have a interesting question rylan uh will arsenal fan here <laughs> <laughs> guy off the screen off the screen off the yeah did you did you rip any of the stickers prior like or, or do you keep that separate like have you thought about ripping it like obviously you know you're running a store so you have a bunch of boxes but how many did you rip? Did you rip any, you know, before this one of one was pulled? Well, I'll be honest with you, I did. I, I like. I mean, that's what I'm finding out. Is actually it's detrimental to the store for us to have like high end boxes around here. <laughs> <laughs> that's very that's fair. Very fair. Um, I tend to like to open stuff. In fact, I was. You, we get jumped. We should. I was gonna just open one now. Yeah, do, do it. Hey, oh, yeah, this would be is. all time. If you hit <laughs> no one of one on air. This would be all oh, time. Man. I, so back to your question though, I open, I, my wife is a soccer fan. Um, my, I have two daughters, they're not super big soccer fans, but they'll watch games. Uh, in fact, it's kind of funny, my wife is a Liverpool fan, so my youngest daughter's only three. Yeah, it's weird. So she knows, she knows daddy's team and she knows mommy's team. Gotcha, gotcha. That's cute, that's cute. She's still learning, so it's kind of confusing because they're both usually red. Yeah, they're both, they're both red teams. That's true. All right. And what I opened, I got the only thing that parallel, obviously the, the blues are the most common, right? Right, yeah. It's blue, red, purple, oh, green. Yeah. I got two reds and they're probably, the red I got was um, a Brazilian player um, and one of the stadiums. Oh, oh okay. Uh, okay. Right. <laughs> that's, that's better than we did. Yeah. No purple and nothing nothing exciting, so. Yeah, after we, yeah, definitely rip it. And, and after your, that whole entire, messy conversation we actually ended up going to our local soccer store and we ended up ripping so many packs and like it's funny because like they were charging so it's really really expensive prices <laughs> but we just had no disregard yeah we we pulled an mbappe red sticker and we're like you know what um we probably should buy it off a uh, website or something like that or maybe from strictly <laughs> soccer actually so yeah yeah, it's definitely a fun thing. We've done um, we've done like a trade night already. I'm trying to schedule another one, but I'm going to be out of town on a bunch coming up, and I I like to be here when I do it. Oh, very cool. Um, so here we go, on 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 air on camera. Yeah, yeah let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. All, all the above. Oh man. Uh, Ecuador and Ghana is what I got so far. Ecuador. Anything in the back? John's a big Ecuador guy. <laughs> No, no color in no a stadium. Ah, oh, oh, right. yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was what happened when we ripped. Yeah. That was what happened. We ripped us. three and a half boxes. Okay. Oh, it's a Busquets, yeah. Right. Busquets, okay. okay. Yeah, we opened Last three and a half time. box on the like pretty much on the floor of a soccer boot store. Um, yeah, just like on <laughs> so, the ground. It was very sad. <laughs> it was pretty sad pretty to watch. Was it the, uh, Was it like a? What kind of store was it? It was an actual soccer store. It's like a pro shop where like mom and dad comes and buys new shoes for their kid kind of store. <laughs> like, <laughs> what was yeah. the name? What was the name? Oh, of it? I forget the name. Of it. Post it's something post. It's out in Hayward. Hayward. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's near um, Alameda in California. Or Alameda, yeah, yeah, California. Yeah, so. All right. Yeah. But, but. Yep. But hey, Ryan, um, it's just incredible, man. Like when we saw that sticker, I think we also saw somebody pull. Apparently, someone else pulled a one of one Ronaldo. We don't know if that's for real, for real or not. Um, but man, that was that was literally the topic. It's still talk. The, the, the topic of the one of one Messi is still out yeah. there, um, and it's just incredible to even like to, to be to see it in person is just wild. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, I I think some places posted. I, I don't, I'm not on TikTok. I'm on Instagram, so I guess there was a lot of TikTok. Oh yeah, pictures of it and stuff like that. So um, I do have some cool pictures of it. I, I don't mind sharing. Yeah, absolutely. Because like, I'll, I'll tell you what, man. Um, for for how expensive the sticker is, there's not one really good photo of it, <laughs> <laughs> which was the funniest part of it. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of fuzzy because I think Brian posted it first, and he took like a like a. 
I don't know. He was all excited. No, yeah. I got you. That's, You're what we, that's what we're saying. Like, you get so excited that you don't get to, you know what I mean? You forget to take the photo. Um, but which um, is, yeah, which no, I didn't forget to. I took one with the guy who posed it. I took several with, like, we sell, like, like, World Cup replica trophies, and we have the World Cup ball. So I was like, I got to put it next to there. Gotcha. So yeah. the idea was I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to print out a photo and just kind of set it next to those, just have fun display. Just to, like, <laughs> I love I that. Would too. Yeah, for sure. I went too. Um, but Ryan, hey, thank you so much. Uh, I was gonna say, where's your, exactly your store at? It's strictly soccer. I, I see it on um, on Instagram, but where is it at? Uh, so we're in Midlothian, Virginia, just south of Richmond. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I've been I've been yeah. to Richmond. Yeah, that's where um, some of my favorite podcasters out there. It's uh, God, I forgot their names, but they talk yeah, soccer. If you guys know, there's there's a guy. There's two guys. Um, Actually, one of them passed away. Yes, Taylor Rockwell. Um, yeah, Taylor Walk Rockwell is one of them, and his friend, his friend passed away. Yep, those those are like uh, my guys that I've never actually met them. Yeah. A long, long time ago. But uh, yeah, we're in Lothian, Virginia. Uh, strictly soccer, family-owned store since '91. So I'm like second-generation soccer store owner. Um, and then VA Soccer Cards is just an offshoot that we literally just started this year because I realized I was bombarding in our social media with too much cards. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Yeah, that's one thing we've noticed is like, I, at least I've noticed is a lot of soccer stores are actually getting to the trading card for soccer, um, which is like amazing to see. And that's what we need to grow like the specific category for soccer. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's definitely like a natural thing. Of course, figuring out like what to carry, when to carry it, how to sell it, that's a whole different thing but just having it and even selling like today i got like four kids came in <clears throat> we do like bargain packs some older stickers that i sell for like a buck um and they come in with their 25 bucks and just go crazy that's <laughs> awesome. oh that's awesome that's crazy yeah, it's 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 cool that you're getting more and more exposure to soccer cards i think that's something that we want more and more of and i mean especially giving kids the opportunity of buying something with 25 dollars is, is just an amazing thing right now because soccer cards can be expensive yeah. so I'll make sure you get them. Yeah. And you can quickly get, I mean, I do have cards that are like nothing crazy, but I've got stuff that's maybe between 100 and 150 for certain auto or numbered cards mm -hmm. um, that I, I have, so far I haven't sold a, lot, sold a lot of that stuff, but I don't expect to yet because people don't even know that I have it. Yep. But I do <laughs> see kids that are, that, are, that, are, that, are, that are card collectors and they're soccer players and they literally come to the store and they're like, wow, I didn't know there were soccer cards. I'm like, wait a second, what, what do you mean you didn't know there were soccer cards? Because maybe just all their friends at school do football, basketball, or baseball, or whatever. It's popular. <laughs> no, it's true because um, I told these guys the, a real hack to find like wax or like stickers or packs is the actual soccer stores. You guys get allocation there too, so that's why it's pretty funny that uh, you mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But, but but Ryan, thank you so much. I'm glad you took the time out. Um, I can't wait to uh, put this story out there because it's a, it's really incredible, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Nice to talk to you guys. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you guys, and uh, hope to stay part of the uh, you know soccer card community. Absolutely, sounds man. amazing. Thank you. All right, see you, Ryan. See you. All right, take care. Peace. There we go. Damn. Awesome. That was that was honestly really cool. That was cool. Yeah, that was like really that. cool. Yeah, yeah. That you guys, you guys cool. were like, that was good. No, I really wanted to. I really did want to ask him. I was like, all right, come on, man. You, I, made, you made an offer, right? <laughs> yeah, no, be, be real. Be, be real. Like, like I don't know. But then the conversation yeah. talked about changing yeah. to something else. Uh, like we got okay. off the stickers. Yeah, right, right. Brian just dominated the conversation. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, he's the kid. It was the camera was right next. You're the guy. You're the guy. Yeah, I had to wave like out of camera. Like, hey, I just have to be very camera friendly. So, I mean, I think it would be fun to have him more on the pod at close to the World Cup because I am curious what his thoughts are, especially with running a soccer store as 2026 approaches. That's true. Do you really see like? I mean, and the only sport that's left that has like real mom and pop shops are soccer stores. Yeah. Exactly. Like in like random strip malls across America, like soccer stores. funny. We're coming up with more questions. Where yeah, I know. We should yeah. definitely have him back. Well, he's on the was camera. Like, he was like away from home. I, I want to if we had like a day on Saturday. Also, it's, what time is it right now? It's probably, it's like 9.30 there right yeah. now. He's <laughs> got kids. Know, it's 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 out, man. There is one thing though that he said that was really interesting, which was, was like just holding the messy till after the world cup like, yeah that's like, a different because, process no because oh yeah. shit we're still doing the podcast yeah right this still are. <laughs> <laughs> no because that kind of relates to what i was going to talk about actually for for my thing which okay. was you know when you pull something big like obviously like one of one messy is very different from like a red from merlin you know oh or, okay. red Iqbal. Right. like okay. I, I you know good segue you've changed will 
yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've just I just never expected to like pull something good. So when I like pulled like you know for the viewers, like I pulled like a red Iqbal auto and like an orange Holland, and like at fr I was happy, and then I was like, oh shit, now. What do, what do I do now? Like, I actually, like, didn't know what to Talk do. To Brian, man. And it was, like, a mad... I kind of did a mad dash to to move it. But it's it's really interesting. His thoughts was, you know, for Messi, obviously, very different player. Yeah. But, like, to not do it, like, ahead of the World Cup hype, but even just be like, yeah, you know, like, I think, like, probably his price appreciation would be, like, after the World Cup, after the event. And that's not something we normally see with... But if it's not, like, players like Messi or Ronaldo or, like, Holland, like, or, I mean, Holland's on the World Cup, but... There's, that legacy isn't going to follow them post the World Cup. Like it's almost yeah. like if you get those big fat offers early. See, see yeah, but don't you? Wouldn't you? Would you guys take the first offer? Or would you guys hold? Like I'll that's the, the thing. First offer. That's I, what Sasha says. Offers. Yeah, first so, offer as I've well. Been, I've been there, right? So yeah. when you you first just start, it's easy to talk about when you don't have a card, right? Of course. That's then, why. When, when you actually get it, you're like, oh man, what if? Yeah. Right. And and that's it depends on your situation. I think John is probably best. Yeah. Kind of. Like, I mean, one thing that I. I got more context for, and I think it, it's definitely interesting. Is no, no, it's just more of like it's Put cool. It's cool. No, it's cool that you did that. Like he did that with his dad. I don't know if he needs the money or not. Like I think that the, that that changes a lot. That does change a lot of context. That's yeah, for sure. And yeah, and it's more of like if you're gonna hold it, you put it in a safety deposit box. I kind of agree. The better shot of it going up in value over long term is like probably if he like if something happens, it's not like it's gonna. It's his last World Cup. We've talked about first it. first parallel. First parallel for World Cup stickers. Yep. Well, first like the one of one. I mean, oh, stickers. Yeah, yeah, you can talk about the red versus yeah. orange or whatever. I mean, are. if you think about it, if he, I mean, last World Cup, it's going to be the only one of one ever yeah. for the future of stickers of a messy World of Cup a messy sticker. World Cup sticker. Right. Also, I think the the conversation could go. Do you would you hold Ronaldo if you pulled it, or would you hold Messi? Like, which one are you more likely? All right, let's. I think the difference is I would rather hold Messi because I think Messi has a better shot of winning it. All right, let's get that Ronaldo guy in here now. We gotta, we gotta. Oh, if you're listening, yeah. Brian's DMs are open. Yeah. What yeah. I wanted to say though was like, I, like the emotional like pressure, like because like I pulled, I, you know, I just pulled a red from Merlin. It wasn't crazy, but like I felt so like I was like, oh boy, well, like what do I do now? I like started panicking actually, <laughs> uh, because I just never expected to be in that situation when I got some Merlin boxes for myself. Like, do you guys ever feel that pressure when you pull something big, or are you just more hype? Hey, man, act like you've been there before. I never have. I mean, sometimes, sometimes when you pull one of ones, yeah, it just sometimes. like it changes you a little bit. Like, <laughs> yeah, just don't look at me. Okay. When I'm in my car <laughs> ripping, I ex I expect to pull only hey, two. Exactly. Yeah. I rip three, when you rip three Merlin Blasters and only get three parallels that are dookie, you have to really think about your options. So. Um, but it, it's, 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 it's interesting that you're talking about this because uh, it, it really depends on your situation, bro. Like, do you need the money? Do you not need the money? It really is like contextual. Like, I think it's also like depending on the value of the card, right? Like if it's several thousand dollars, like sometimes it's good to like be in a situation where you get you, the liability is there, right? Yeah. Something happens to it, it gets lost in the yeah. mail. It, it there's a lot of options that that can happen as a result. I mean, not saying that under a thousand dollars is not an amazing hit, but sometimes that's a little bit easier to be like, hey, I could tuck this away, I could take my offers a little bit, but I mean personally. I mean, holding like a five to ten thousand dollar card raw in like a random apartment, you always think like, what's the worst thing that could happen? You get water damage, there's a flood, you know, something like that. It's you want to kind of want to get rid of it. Murphy's okay. law, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I almost think the opposite. Like with the hundred dollar cards, like a few hundred, like those are the ones I'd want to move first. Like the thousands, like they should, you know, like unless it's like super super you know hype or something like that it depends on the card like you have a little bit yeah. more you know that's a, it's an interesting question yeah. right Do, are you more like what's what type of seller are you are you more like the seller that's like um what you're in it for or are you the seller that's wanting to sell at market because that was an like actual conversation and when we posted that tick tick tock like yeah. trying to make your money back versus trying to just move exactly cards. yeah well, like what like some people actually don't believe in like what is your what you're in it for right mm -hmm. um you should be selling something at the actual market value yeah like I what are you, what party are you in i mean for me it's it's just money back i mean i i sold it in less than 24 hours i showed you guys the cards and i'm shipping them tomorrow if it was a red ronaldo would that change something no you would still yeah sell it ASAP. yeah i would i would feel more comfortable holding it for more than 24 hours but I would tell you it'd probably be gone by the weekend. I just think there's also other factors like would you grade it? Do you see upside value long term? Like a red Ronaldo is a very it's a 
more skewed <laughs> question, like, but yeah, that's like a big, completely that's a different. Big <laughs> I, I would still do raw. I would, I would still do raw. Really? I think so. Mm. I would just take it, you know, go with it, and just kind of run with it, well, and then use well, that. Wrong, yeah. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's just like you know, I would take the first offer, take a good offer. I'd feel more comfortable holding it, you know, over the weekend for sure. But like, why not just take it and put it into something else that you know you can do? Like, you gave me really good advice. You know, it wasn't about ripping, but it was about like, you know, like the money that you get. Like, it's about like what you can do with that. Not uh, trying to like maximize everything. And that's kind of like how I like to play because I think I can make plays. So yeah, why not just use that money to something else? Make my money back. That's my thoughts. Yeah, I mean, in my situation with the car that I pulled, like I kind of regret. Nuts. I mean, because I know the the result of it. It's because we know what happened. Yeah, but also yeah. like I was in that car for two hundred dollars, and yeah. the valuation was probably closer to twenty five k. And it's like, could I? I, I didn't want to hold on to it. You don't want to run the risk of grading it, and like I don't know. I would rather just take the money and to Will's point, like I yeah, use it on on other things. But unless that you got to weigh your options with a car that big. Like if you know you're never going to see it again, like, you know, there's going to be always going to yeah. be a market for it. I would say the messy one is like something I would never see again. Yeah. Like I mean, the, literally you would never see it and again. That, yeah. And you can, again, after the podcast, I think there was more context that I got as well. And <laughs> so I, and, now wait, you do. John, does this mean for the, for the listeners, you think are you is... flipping sides? Is this a hundred uh, no. thousand dollar oh. card? Definitely oh. not. Definitely oh. not. Oh. I, I, I still, I don't know why you're looking at that, but well, <laughs> definitely not. But <laughs> all right, <laughs> this, okay. This, this quick bait title, but I'd say considering Arena sold for four K again. However, you want to believe the sale, it's whatever. I think it's probably closer to like a five figure, but not like more in like the ten to fifteen range. Oh shit, five Just figure. That's five that's figure. That's, a, that's, a that's so different. That's from a big jump. Game, bro. Last well, weekend yeah. when we were coming down to fist, it was <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Well, I think the question was also, what do you think the worth is of that card? And when I think yeah, what the worth is of that card, and I think the worth is what I would physically pay for it. And those are kind of things that I kind of grouped together. No, it was it was funny. I was getting toasted in the comments too. Yeah, I know. But you, I got, will you, say, you got toasted more than me. But I will say the people that were on my side, there were some smart people. I was yeah, like, I, mean, I was like, yeah, oh, when, you, when you got the verified check next to your name, I think that's a respect that I got. Like, I got you. Know, hey, my boy I ben, I got you. I respect you, man. You. Um, Eric, but, respect it, man. Yeah, yeah, that's a pseudonym. So, oh, that's a pseudonym. I'm, I'm just kidding. I, <laughs> oh, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, but hey, so uh, I think Will is that was that your question about best practice questions, or what, what was the actual question? Oh, I mean, I, I was thinking of that was like sort of my main one. That was your main I, question? Yeah, I mean, let's we have Q and A. I have other questions, okay. but we can save it for another podcast. Okay. Okay. It won't go anywhere. <laughs> I just was thinking about it while I was waiting in traffic. I thought gotcha. that was a better question. Um, well, we have Q and A. Mm -hmm. um, like that, I didn't know that was gonna take that much time, uh, but it was really cool to hear. Yeah, it was awesome. He's uh, a good guy. I, yeah, really cool. I, I, I was gonna ask him what his whatnot was because I was actually kind of curious if we could have like plugged it. Yeah, why didn't you do that? Because you were dominating the why, conversation. Why did you hate him? I liked him a lot. <laughs> um, and you're wondering where these questions were uh, formed. It was on Facebook. I was. Yeah, the Sunday League Investors <laughs> Facebook, 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 Facebook. Sunday huh? League Investors Facebook group. Yeah. So if you want to ask your questions, we we will do a lot of Q and A's on this podcast. Um, and I think we got like one, two, three, five pretty decent questions. Um, nice. And yes, yeah, so I guess we'll get started. Uh, number one, do you think it will be harder to sell cheaper cards as people focus on buying high-end cards? I guess the question is basically about um, people are being smarter. They're not buying base cards. I'm assuming that's what he's saying. Um, it's so it def defend like what does cheaper cards mean base yeah, or does cheaper cards mean anything under 50 bucks? Because that's like a different question. It's a question. very like... It's a broad question. Broad yes. question. I, I would say like base cards. I think it's base cards he's he's talking okay. about. It, it has to be that because there's... You think base cards? I think he means like kind of like high number parallels. Ooh, that's a good, that's yeah, a good those topic. Are, those are two very different, that's like, two, two different They answers. could kind of be in the same range. I think 200 and under is kind of what I feel like this, this person's talking okay, about. Okay, let's talk oh, about shit. it. Sure. Okay. All right. And this is from Max Bullman. <laughs> okay. So, oh, do you want me to start? Yeah, or? yeah. Who okay, wants cool. to take a stab so, at it? Base cards, I think there's a, I mean, there's kind of the misconception when you first go into the hobby and what base cards are and how rare they are, right? Even though if you look at 2018 Prism, like those aren't necessarily the most difficult cards to find. You can look at an Mbappe 2018 Prism and find like a lot of them. Yeah. If you, but I do think what is buying and selling right now, especially with the climate the way it is in the economy, is the under 200. And also thinking about who is buying the cards right now. If you're, if you're a kid, you're not going to buy a $200 fucking card. You're going to try to buy something the best value you can get for 50 bucks, the best value you can get for $25. Sometimes that's the low number of parallels you want to grade, you want to go through the process of doing. 
I don't think those will ever go away because you got to start somewhere. Same thing with base cards, same thing with everything. I, I mean, if you want to trade up, you got to start somewhere to trade up. People are going to also want to trade down for liquidity. There's a lot of different ways you can approach the question. I just think that it's not going to be any, I think it's going to be roughly the same as we approach to any World Cup or after. Okay. How are you, Chris? What, what are your thoughts? About I don't know. As, as someone it's like still new to this, I think the as you get more experience and you learn about what's out there and what's different, you kind of like, I now find myself avoiding base cards, not just because they're cheap, but because, oh, like what I thought was cool is just kind of like, quote unquote, normal. Yeah, they suck. Like Chris, Mosaic suck. and like Chrome and things like that. You compare those against just like whatever top series one and like other just like like Bowman and things like that. And you just see like these plain pieces of paper and you see like a mirrored card. You think the mirrored card just looks cooler. But it's a base card in yeah. that set. Um, I don't know. Like, if you look at, like, I don't know. Right now, I'm in a deep dive of, like, early 2000s basketball. And there's a lot of, like, rookies you can get that are just tops rookies. And then there's tops chromes, ro tops chrome rookies. And the chromes are valued a lot higher. Makes a lot more sense. as a more, like, exclusive checklist and a smaller, like, list. But it also visually just is a better-looking card. So, I don't know. Like... I, 200, what, made 200, I'm sorry? what made you change like because you started with like one five dollar cards now you're spending a you know a few hundred dollars now right no well, not a few hundred but yeah one hundred dollars a couple hundred yeah hundred <laughs> cents let's go I, I have a few cards that are a hundred plus yeah we'll leave, we'll leave it at that yeah okay okay what changes i think was uh um you got money i think it's hey. it's not just <laughs> not just the money but realizing I don't know. To me, it's like I also, uh, me, I just like to live an organized life. So I realized, oh, I was having, I just have too much stuff now. And I probably don't have as much as even Brian has in his apartment right now. But to me, it's just like, wow, this is a lot of cards I looked at once and I put them in a box and don't really look at it anymore. But if I put something that's 50 bucks or 100 bucks in it and I put it in something nicer and then I end up looking at it a little bit more, then to me, it's, val it's more valuable to me. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of. I know. I feel that. Yeah. It's a good answer. No, I totally I mean, agree. How about you, Will? My PC is like in a little box by my bedside. So. Do you even look at them? Yeah, I do. Actually. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I pull it out when I need motivation to work because I'm like, right, I spent money on you. <laughs> <laughs> to, to work, right? You <laughs> to don't work. Look, to you work. Don't, you don't look at that Henri in bed next to you and you're <laughs> was, looking at it. I and... was picturing the Wolverine meme. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. You're holding that Henri in your left hand and your right hand. It's not gone. It's, it's not gone. Your right hand somewhere else. Under the and... blanket. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Everything's shaking a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people are condensing collections overall, but I think like the interesting thing is like with how the economy is doing right now. I think like I'm not too worried about like the under two hundred dollar cards, just because I feel like that's a purchase that a lot of people can still make, you know, for fun, you know, for themselves. Yeah. Like people have usually uh, that sort of, I guess, spending power, you know, to do it sort of without thinking. I think the thing that re we're really seeing is like, uh, versus like super high end, like the super high end, I feel like people are still buying, people are still doing it, you know, it's still going for thousands of dollars, but sort of between, I wanna say like, especially like the 400 to like a thousand range, it's like really hard for someone to like, I feel like psychologically get past that barrier, especially in this like economic climate. So like when you think well, of like patients or not patient psychology, buyer psychology, like I think that's where well, I, we're seeing maybe less, yeah. less. I have a follow up question to that because I, I, I'm often faced with this conundrum too when people post like IG story sales and they are, or they're looking to buy and they post like low, mid, high end. What are those price ranges for y'all? Like when you see mid, mid range, what is that range? 400 to a thousand i would say that yeah i would agree like actually you can make a case like over 250 what about you will? for us yeah for yeah for, for people yeah. it's other people is just different right i'm mine's kind of like 400 to 1500 now but that's because i Whoa. i personally really Whoa. all right guys all right for all the for all the listeners they, here they play energy here. for, for <laughs> all the <laughs> listeners oh here i just want to uh, just say that i'm a i am a noob so, you know, that you guys aren't alone if you feel like they're throwing up real big numbers for no reason. My mid-tier, I'd say, is like 50 to 100, you know, just a little bit Wait, that's humble. Mid, mid and I would say if I'm seeing, like, no Instagram stories, I'm looking at 50 to 100 as, like, that's mid-tier. That, oh, so you're, like, so if someone says, I'm doing a mid-end mid -end story, so you're expecting you 50 to 100 50 to 100, yeah. If I'm going, if I see high-end, I'm expecting, like, 
I think at that point I'm expecting everything like 250 plus. Then what's a thousand to you then? That's like for for me right now yeah. for a single card that's like unattainable. For me right now I'm like I'm not looking at that as something that I even want or. That's so I mean, interesting. Might, I might want it, but I'm not like, oh, I gotta have it. I'm like, gotta try to get this. Yeah. I mean, realistically, I think you are more likely a majority of the car collecting community right now than we are. And I'm not saying that because I'm, way, I'm closer like, to the children. Yeah, yeah. John. Can we, can we pull this? Can we, can people comment on this? Because I'm actually really <laughs> curious as well. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Let me know in the comments. Uh, what is these? the monetary value of low-end slabs or low-end cards, mid-end, and high-end. Because um, I, I think anything over 1,000 is quite high-end for me. And yeah. super high-end is like 10, 10 plus, yeah. 10,000 plus. And, and, that, and that is... But I mean, like, like my... story sale quality, right? No one's posting 10K cards on like their IG story. Oh, there, oh, I mean, really? there is. Oh, maybe y'all are following accounts. That follow. <laughs> okay, that, that's different. Sorry, okay. Yeah, yeah that's the adult account. Yeah, okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. You see Brian's... Uh... Yeah, Brian, can you lift my parental controls on my IG? That'd be really nice. I'd like to look at cooler cards, please. Instagram premium, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I think you're a majority of what people are doing right now. It's like collecting what you like. And if you can get it for under $50 and nine times out of 10, there's really not a, you're in a good spot, right? It's a lot more justifiable nowadays. And I think that's what people want. And that's what's moving, right? If you look at whatnot, the 50 to hundred range, those cards move. Like they do. 200 is tough. Ask Troy, Trek 415 cards. He does very well with it. Really? Yeah, yeah I actually well. like Troy's story sells a lot because he has a really good range. Yep. For yeah. anybody yeah. who follows him, you can find something for 20 bucks on there or you can find something for like 500 bucks, you know? It's like, yeah, good. there's a good range. That's interesting. Yeah, so Max, I don't think you should be too worried about people buying high-end. Um, I think high-end is just like over a thousand. I think that's actually the, the area where it's most vulnerable yeah. if an economy downturns, which is where I play at the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen the 800 to 1200 cards go down more frequently than the 50 to $100 cards. Bingo, so, and Bingo. that's And again, if you're trying to enjoy what you do, trying to collect, that's kind of the range you want to play in, right? So that was one question. That was yeah. one question, oh, bro. Shit. I will say... We have, a, we have a lot of questions. I know we have a lot of questions. Can I just These end on questions. one thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think it's a really good question. Is I also wonder, like, depending on, like, how long you've been in the hobby, I feel like the more you're in the hobby, like, you see bigger and bigger cards. Yeah. Like, I, I'm a year in, right? And, every, you know, most of the cards I look at now, it's like, you know, you check the IG stories, they're like a few hundred dollars a K, you know, something like that. Versus I feel like when you're very new to the hobby, you don't see that as much as you're not following those accounts as much yet. So it might be like, I'm just curious on that psychology as well. Yeah, I mean, you used to be very, I mean, you used to be really like into the under 200 range. I forgot what it was, but like yeah, you, you yeah. weren't really pre interested. Yeah, yeah pre-modern yeah, pre was like a like very under, interesting under Yeah, under 500 was, yeah, sort of where I was like yeah. started. So, but I mean, I don't want to go too deep into that the question. There should be a whole another. That's a whole episode. entire episode, yeah, yeah that yeah. we can talk about. But um, but hey, let's talk to let's answer Mark's question. Uh, Mark, shout out, Holland is he the best striker we've ever seen? And what do you think about his long term prices? <sighs> so I mean, fun. long long term. Just let's say one year. Are we talking about just him as? Are we talking about his value with cards or just value soccer, cards, cards. In soccer in general? Both, okay. both. Like, what do you yeah. do? You think he's the best striker you ever seen? I mean, fuck, man! Like, is he human or machine? Is what I mean, it's like it's the same time as like I don't know if we're just watching Aaron Judge at the same time too, but it's like, what the fuck's going on? Like, is there something Poor in the machines, water? Bro. Like, it, like did <laughs> these athletes just, just like bro. all of a sudden just out of COVID they were just I don't know. It's just <laughs> something's weird, man. <laughs> I think Holland's amazing, but De Bruyne is very important to Holland being who he is right now because the De Bruyne, Foden, that team is setting him up for success. And I think if you put him back on Dortmund, I mean, he was still scoring goals, but I don't think he's the machine that you're seeing right now. If he keeps his up, would he win a Ballador next year? I mean, I don't know who would even compete with him right yeah, now. I would think so. I mean, honestly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like it's no brainer. I think the one thing that's going to hurt him is Norway not being in the World Cup. But I do think Norway yes. potentially in 2026 could be an interesting team because you got Odegaard. You have a lot of other strong players. So maybe long, long term, Holland could be the play. He's still young. So how old is he again? 20, like 22. 22, maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like he's still, he's not even 25 yet. Yeah. I that's mean, what I thought. Yeah. I think he has a lot to, like, I think. He has a lot to prove for his prices to continue to go up. I would say that, like, in, just in terms of card market, I think a lot of it is priced in already. I think in terms of like soccer, he's just in the perfect team. I think like yeah. Henri made an interesting comment where he actually claims like Lewandowski actually has been more influential than Holland 
because like the way he you know Barca wasn't a team that could get first in La Liga before Lua kind of started versus Man City was going to get first kind of with they, they got first without a striker like let's be honest here you're saying Gabriel Jesus wasn't a striker Damn, bro. He said it. He, said, he, <laughs> he, said it. he, he wasn't played as a striker. Fair enough. He I'll wasn't playing. Touche, touche. And to be fair, I got to give shout-outs to the, the Copenhagen uh, goalkeeper. He only he only let Holland score two goals. He didn't let Holland score a Hattie. Yeah. What a legend. He can tell his kids that. <laughs> it's true. Um, but I think long-term prices, I think he was trying to – I don't know if he's trying to frame this, but a lot of people are probably on the boat of, like, should I be buying Holland right now? Um, I think there's good deals out there, but I think there's ne- there's never – a time where you're too late on a player yeah. it just never has happened not lebron not not messi not ronaldo so i don't think you have to worry about especially if out. they're young especially if they already have a legacy you know like yeah like there will be a lull period and we hinted this a lot I, we really feel like world cup is a good interesting time to yeah. pick up holland um, i'm still picking up holland but at a specific price uh, but you're definitely not too late though the one thing i would say is i think he's in the mosaic road to qatar checklist oh boy. so you have a little bit of time um where he's going to be in the norway kit but I would say, yeah, I mean, if you're once you're hunting for a Holland Genesis, I think you're in a good position long term, and I think yeah. you're fine. I mean, I, I will just add that I think that like I agree with the lull period. Like he's he has the spotlight. Some like he just has the spotlight. So I think someone else will take the spotlight, especially during the World Cup, and you could see his prices maybe dip a little bit. I think now is a good time to research cards, like which cards have the lowest gem rates and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. That, there's I a lot think, of data on that too yeah, right now. Like I think you want to put more research into it now, preparing for the lull rather than kind of reacting to it right now. Because I think there will be time. Yeah, like I wouldn't go out and run and buy Holland base right now. I think that those are going to be so t- easy to find. But it's yeah. more of like if you could find a short printed pair, like parallel from Sapphire for like a pretty decent price in, in the range. I think you're not really going to be in a position where you lose long-term unless the market really does overturn. Yeah, and there's a lot of stuff you don't really see, you know, unless you look at the numbers. Like, I know a few months ago, and maybe this is wrong now, but right when um, Donruss came out with the Kabooms, with the Holland's yeah. Kabooms, uh, I remember we were talking, you know, at a show, and there were more PSA 10s of the Holland Kaboom than PSA 9s even. Yeah. You know, and, you know, that's something that you might want to see. Is that easier to grade than others? Is that something you want to pick up raw and then grade because you have a higher likelihood of a 10? Do you pick up stuff that just is impossible to gem? Like, those are kind of, like, the questions I think about. Right. Um, okay, next question is when... <laughs> It's a funny question, <laughs> facetious question, but I think it's also an interesting question to address. Um, uh, it's Carlos, my boy Carlos. Shout out to Carlos. Shout out to Carlos. When everyone floods the market uh, come November, which is World Cup time, um, and prices hit rock bottom with supply outweighing demand, so he's making a statement. All right. Do you think the soccer market will take months or years to recover? So he's assuming that it's going to tank. Um, I guess the first sentiment is, do you think the market's going to tank after the World Cup? Um, or during the World Cup, I think we talked about this a little bit, and will there be new highs and values for cards, for soccer cards? That's a tough question. Well, it's a very tough question. What's the next? What's the next major tournament after the World Cup? Champions, Champions League. League. Champions League. When does that like? Is it in March? It's like starts, finalized, or? like the actual rounds March, up. April. March, I mean, April. rounds of sixteen is after the holidays. Right. Exactly. So I feel like I don't know. Not very long, right? Like. Because I, I I don't know what the TV scheduling looks like, but I feel like the hype's gonna be right back with it. Like right, like as far as the general public goes, you're riding off the World Cup into the most exciting like. I should cha- agree with like, Chris though. Like Champions really, League. I you disagree, know? but you should go first. I agree, and, and I'll and I'll say this um, with how everything's shaping up, what I'm seeing outside. I always talk about this like how there's a lot of shows going on um, outside of your uh, U.S. You know, you have the Germany show that I'm going to, the Europe show in London. Um, this, this culture of collecting cards is picking up for specifically soccer, um, and you have parallels of uh, stickers, that's going to convert a lot of people to trading cards. And I think that's an interesting bet I, I'm willing to take. You think Fanatics uh, is going to step behind soccer more? Aren't they about to buy Panini? They basically bought Panini. Yeah. What's yeah. their official, like, I don't know. 2024, 2026, yeah, I, I can't but remember. They already have their hands basically right. tied yeah. in right. there. Yeah, exactly. I mean... I'm, I think what they're going to do is like kind of similar to what they're doing with like panini packs or like the the sticker packs. But I think what you can do is like, hey, you bought this jersey from Messi, so let's put a little pack of of Donner's Road to Guitar in there as like, and just kind of get people to know a little bit more about it that way. And it's going to kind of, oh, this I, I could start collecting this. This is cool. Like I like it. Well, but let's buy a box. 
the box, you hit something cool. You're like, man, this is really easy to hit some cool stuff. And then kind of explain What about Champions League stickers with parallels? Is that a I would That be could be. I, mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised, surprised to do it. Yeah. yeah. Like with, why the, with the booming success of these, that'd be interesting. Actually, it would be like around World Cup time if they drop that. That just seems like it. it they're just oh, go ahead. Where you... I mean, I, I, this is going to be a different conversation. You could just keep it with that one. Yeah. No, I'm just saying. Like, I just don't think it's going to be as bad as people think. Um, I mean, it depending depends on, on the, the economy. economy. <laughs> I was going to say if the economy doesn't get crazy, crazy, which kind of looks like it might get a little crazy. I mean, um, I kind of disagree. I'm on the opposite camp, actually. Yeah, go ahead. I think like I'm waiting for after the World Cup to buy actually, okay. but I think that there like it's there might be like an oversupply as as Carlos is saying like especially you know as you're thinking as like grading's going down people are rushing to grade things and then also you know it's I feel like it might be a little bit of a race to the bottom because like everyone's waiting for the World Cup I think there and whether that supply will be able to be absorbed by the new people coming in. I think the lower end cards will be able to, but maybe not sort of the mid high end cards as much. I agree. Um, I think okay. that like, you know, sort of the next big thing, you know, in my head actually, is um, after uh, Benzema wins Ballon d'Or, and the season for Ballon d'Or starts again, I think that's actually, I, I'm, I think that's where it might get interesting because then. Messi and Alder are out of the picture. You know they'll still be playing, but they're not going to win Ballon d'Or. If they did, it would be crazy. And then it's Holland, Mbappe, Pedri. You know whoever you want, Musiala. I think that's actually more interesting than Champions League. I think I, I have two things that I'd, I'd like to add. So I think the first one is for U.S. I think U.S. making it deep in the World Cup is the the longest sustained that that the soccer card market, at least the current price structure, will probably be. If they make it to the quarterfinals, which ties their longest like. I guess their longest output in a while. I think that would be something that's really important. I think the next aspect, I'm trying to remember what I was going to say. Oh, whenever Messi comes to the MLS, that would be the play. Because I think that he's going to bring a whole, like, think about what happened with Beckham. It's just you don't have soccer cards where they are were back then. Or even yeah. Pele. Let's or not Pele. forget yeah. who did it, the GOAT. He Best, did it first. Like, I'm just saying, like, imagine him in MLS Sapphire, his first MLS card. Like that, that's going to be, there's going to be something with that. And people are going to be like, oh, people that never got to see someone that fucking talented play can finally see them play. And that's, I think there's going to be a, a lot of upside with that. I mean, so. you look at, I mean, that's a good point because you look at like LAFC, LAFC tickets right now. Yeah. With like Gareth Bale. It's like, yep. Gareth even, like no even like earthquake <laughs> games are just like, oh my God, like why are these priced like, so out of like what they should be? <laughs> earthquake all, games. Yeah. All to Get just see down. one, <laughs> I'll see one guy play. I think it's it's going to be a race to the bottom. I think people that aren't as knowledgeable about soccer that were waiting for the World Cup or waiting to sell Holland yeah. before the World Cup, which doesn't make any sense, are going to be the ones that kind of deplete the market a little bit. But I won't think it's going to be years where it takes to recover. I think it's going to be yeah. the next Champions League cycle, the new hot product, yeah. the yeah. new Merlin. It's exactly. yeah. yeah. going to be bringing the card back up. And I think Fanatics, and again, however people want to judge them or whatever they want to do, I think they will, they're the best marketing engine for the soccer card hobby go forward. And I think it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Especially with memorabilia too. Exactly. They'll, they'll interwine that as well. So it's going to be pretty dope. Um, all right, let's do some quick fires uh, just because we're running low on time. Anthony asks, who are your top five USA players for the World Cup? Uh, we don't have to do all five, but like, you know, maybe your your guy you're looking at right now. John, go for it. Pulley, Reyna, McKenney. What's the other ones? Weya and. I think Aronson, just because of the leads stuff, I think he's going to be interesting. I also really like the way Aronson plays. I mean, Plus that flow. Yeah. I mean, striker-wise, I think that's going to be the one you want to make a play on, whoever's going to be that striker. Sargent or PFOC would be the, the two, if I think it would be interesting. Okay. I just like Aronson from Leeds. I'm primarily biased, but I think you know him being at the center of such a big fan base with Leeds is actually really interesting. Him having the nickname Medford Messi you know, rings off the bell. Um, but really, John, I'll just say John's our resident U.S. expert, so that's all I'll say. I think whoever's the center back, too, could be an interesting one because we have a John Brooks-esque goal in this, in this <laughs> World <laughs> Cup. Nice. Just imagine, yeah, like, true. Just it, imagine Zimmerman fucking like, getting a goal in there and seeing the price go up for like MLS Chrome. I, I considered buying a one-on-one John Brooks the other day. Actually. John Brooks is, I mean... Because like, I, th that goal, that Ghana goal. Put him on the so. fucking national team, man. So. One thing I will add just about Aronson is NBC did change their, you know scheduling to show Leeds games now because of the american influence in Leeds with yeah. marsh adams and aronson i think that's really big i mean with streaming now the world cup is going to be 
insane just going into like talking about NBC and things like like it's gonna be that USA England game like you can watch like I remember 2008 you wake up log into ESPN 3 at 4 a.m. to try to watch these games and you're just on your computer watching in 480p you're like I think (laughs) I think that's who it oh yeah and just yeah is that John Brooks yeah (laughs) is that John Brooks yeah I was gonna say anybody that's a striker uh, for USA that's the play yeah, I want I want the all the game. listeners to clip this for when the U.S. goes zero and three and yeah. group, group, group C. I, I don't want to I don't want to say it. They need to they need to improve some things. I'll put it like that. I, also, think, uh, I key, believe I'm, in America. Low key, like Iran is kind of I'm, I respect what they're doing right now with everything going on. Like they're covering up everything and like like covering up their like symbols and stuff like that. Just Same kind of Denmark. protest. I think it's respectable. Like yeah. it's gonna be an interesting group to watch. Yeah, I will say Iran. Remember, drew with Spain the last World Cup. I think that was big for them. Is that why the U.S. put the crest in the middle? So when they do the Pledge of Allegiance, their hand covers it up perfectly. What? Whoa. <laughs> they don't have to protest. They just do the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, oh. God! That's best actually, kid ever. Wow! Best kid ever. That, Confirmed. Wow, that really blew my mind, bro. Confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> quick fire! Quick fire! Under the radar cards. One, one, one at a time. Get back to me. Get back to me too, man. That's. Uh, I didn't expect to see that question. Uh, uh, go for it. No. I, Oh, okay, I'll, I'll go. Pre-modern. I think pre-modern has room to grow, especially if you're banking on... Quick fire. Yeah. <laughs> Quick fire. I'm still, I'm still thinking, man. I still gotta think. On card autos. That's your answer? Okay. Yes. On card autos. I'd say... I think MLS. In a sneaky way, for 2026. All right, you, don't have to, you don't have to defend yourself. I yeah. actually got a better one. A more specific okay. one. Acetate cards. Really hard to grade. Yeah, you are an acetate type of guy. I do That's love true. my acetate. Yeah, he does. So he's an acetate guy. Acetate? Is that <laughs> what do we ass, say? I'm an ass guy. Oh, okay. uh, Holland Salzburg rookie card or a Dortmund patch auto? And I'm assuming it's a, I'm assuming it's in his Dortmund rookie year. Yeah, the yeah. same year he, he transferred like museum, for short term midterm. Flip. It would be museum. Would be the RPA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean Dortmund. I think the R, the RPAs are just so hard it's it's tough, to grade yeah. too. Salzburg unless it's a dot unless it's on card. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Am I the tiebreaker here? I mean, I'm going to say it's Dortmund Patch Listen, Auto. Listen, I just, I mean, Dortmund Patch Auto, I, I think. I think it's Dortmund Patch Auto. Really? really? Here's wrong. the thing. I also just learned right now that he played for Salzburg, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question before we wrap this up. Ivan asked, tacos or pizza? What kind of tacos or pizza is your favorite? Tacos, al pastor, lengua. <laughs> Damn, okay. Uh, tacos and lengua, and then pizza, I just like just, um, still mar- ingwa. margarita. What's the lengua? Uh, well, tongue. Yeah. tongue, beef tongue. Oh, beef for tongue. Uh, pizza, give me extra cheese, extra pineapple. For taco, uh, for tacos, uh, let's go corn tortilla, uh, Jesus. shredded chicken. Okay, and Why that's are we it. Both of our orders. I yeah, no, was I one or the one other. Or the other, bro. Oh, oh, I thought. Oh, right, I missed that aspect of, the, of that. I'll it's be okay. honest. I already the joke loaded in my head. So okay, cool. <laughs> uh, loaded my head. Pizza, pizza would be my choice, but I like tacos though. Yeah, tacos for sure for me. Yeah. What's your What's your pizza order, Brian? Um, we don't have to talk about that. No. But, what's your pizza oh, order? Yeah, pizza yeah, order, yeah. Brian. We gotta, we gotta hear the <laughs> you pizza. Can't, you can't. You can put, yeah. put me on blast in front of a, in front of Ryan. You gotta guys, tell your pizza it's just, order. I don't eat dairy. That's number one. Are you lactose so, intolerant? I don't know. He's not. I'm Asian, so probably. I'm, I am. Not he's sure. not. <laughs> <laughs> you still uh, eat cheese. But listen, don't knock if you don't try it. You know, uh, I like pizza without cheese. Just it's just red sauce and pineapple and if, chicken, you know, sausage. We've seen one with just red sauce, mushrooms. And pineapple. You know, how many listens do we need to do to release the the pizza? Photo? Hey, listen, I'll, how many listens? I mean, just get three hundred. If you 300. made it to this far in the podcast, please blow up Brian's DMs. Do not, please, to get right. that photo posted, guys. Three hundred listens. We're exposing Brian. <laughs> Thank you for joining Slab House. This has been your host, Will Wasmer. Was there we go? Training. There we go. And then we have John JB Collects USA. Yes, sir. We have crispiness. Why'd you say it like that? It's just crispiness. Why'd you separate the words? It's just crispiness. It's like, that's how you wanted me to say it. What? I okay. Never said that and it's Brian with Sunday League Investors. Thank you so much for listening to Slab House podcast, and we'll be back next week. <laughs> <laughs>